says, listen here, you stay in Jerusalem until you get power to move. Fifty days after that he left her, he came back in the form of the Holy Ghost upon the church. Now, that's just Acts, the first part of Acts. But watch when we get down to Acts, the second chapter, and we start understanding the characteristics of the church. Stay tuned. Listen to this. If you go down to about verse in Acts, the second chapter, let's look at verse 40. This is the same, this is just the same disciples. This is Peter. It was with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying they're talking about the testimony of Jesus. He says, save yourselves. You guys see that? Are you guys with me? Are you with me? Save yourselves. <laughs> Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you need to save yourself. Yeah. Now you're not saying it like you mean it. No, 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 you really, you're really not looking at it like you mean it. And I'm talking about the creation of the church. Tara, I'm talking about Jesus did everything he did for this moment, actually, right here. Can you guys see the pivotal direction the church is taking now on the day of Pentecost? Can you see how God says, listen, I was going to create this in the beginning, but this is really what I was trying to get to, a church full of dudamus, a church full of power, a church full of might. But he turns to the people and says, save yourself from this what? Wait a minute. That was over 2,000 years ago. If they needed to save themselves from that untorn generation, how much more do we need to save ourselves now? When you open up your paper every day, you look in your paper, and there's been a shooting, somebody to kill six people, somebody to kill 19 people, somebody to kill 10 people, and all those people were doing was going to the grocery store. You need to save yourself. You can be in your schools, and all of a sudden, somebody come in there, and they just got an issue and take out 22 people. There's a problem in our generation. Yes, please give the Lord a hand clap. When we can't go to the grocery store and feel safe, there's a problem in our generation. When we're sending our kids to school and we have to give them a bulletproof vest or a bulletproof book bag to keep them safe, there's a problem in our schools. There's a problem in our generation. Am anybody listening to me? When we're talking about arming our teachers to make them police officers because we don't know what's going to happen, there's a problem in our schools. But it didn't take the Lord by surprise. Can I tell you, there's, there's going to come a time you're not going to have time to say, Lord, go through your day. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I see a police officer. I see an intruder coming down the hall. Watch this. He says, you need to. Save yourselves from this untorn generation. That they, then, then they that glorify, then they, then they that gladly received the word was baptized. And the same day were, there were added unto, the, unto them about 3,000 souls. What a birth in a church. What a birth in a church. Wait a minute. Peter's preaching. The same Peter that denied Jesus. Now he's been in the upper room. He has received power from God, Gina. And now he goes back and he starts to preach in the word of God. And he tells them, listen here, you need to save yourself from this untorn generation. And he preaches so hard that 3,000 people get saved that day. Lord, what you want to talk about a revival? I would to God I could get 300. He got 3,000 people because he's preaching and teaching the word of God to save in this untorn generation. Watch this, though, because listen, here, this is what you got to understand, that when they got saved, after they got saved, 
And they continually steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and the fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayer and all those things they were doing, Gina. They were, they were fellowship and they were praying and they were singing songs and they were lifting up their name. And they continued steadfast in all that stuff. They were just doing the works of the ministry. Do you guys see this? Stay tuned because this is the birth of the church. Gina, they call it a 24-hour fast. They called a 24-hour prayer line. They wasn't afraid to tell people you need to pray and faint not. They wasn't afraid to tell people you need to get in the face of God because, listen, God is moving. Yes. 24 hours. They're in the face of God. Steadfast in the faith of God. But you need to see this, Sister Pam. Watch what happens. Because when you get in the presence of God, when you get in the face of God, things have to change. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Your way of thinking begin to change. Your way of seeing things begin to change. Your way of feeling things begin to change. That old self you, you used to have have to die and the presence of God have to come in because God is creating a new church. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had what? I'm going to read that scripture one more time. I'm going to read that scripture one more time. What are we talking about? The power of Pentecost. Actually, we're talking about the birth of the church. Actually, we're talking about what church should look like. Actually, we're talking about, Gina, how that God intended the church to be. And he says, fear came upon them. And they began to do some strange things. He says, listen, they had all things in common. There was no ism and chisms. There was nobody sitting on this side of the congregation talking about somebody on that side of the congregation. There was nobody talking about how much somebody had and how little somebody had. Because he says they had all things in common. So my concerns for you were the same as your concerns for me. My main concern was that you're doing okay because if you're not right, I'm not right. But we're talking about the birth of the church. I'm not talking about a church that you can go to and go to all day long and walk out and nobody ever asks you how you're doing. I'm not talking about a church you can go to all day long and somebody can walk out and never give you a hug or a smile. I'm talking about the church that had all things in common. Watch this, though. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them unto all men, and every man had need. And every man had need. And they continued a daily one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meats with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the what? And the what? Wow. Wait a minute. So as they came to church and they laid their money at the foot of the apostle, I'm not taking a collection, so be still. <laughs> and the apostle distributed to all people so that all needs were met, so that nobody had lack, that everybody, it sounds like socialism to me, doesn't it? That sounds like socialism. That, listen, and I'm not suggesting that you bring your check and lay it at my feet. For somebody that don't want to go to work, I'm suggesting that in the body of Christ, that we out of a mindset that if my brother is hurting and I can do something to help my brother, that I'm going to do it. 
I'm going to give from my abundance to somebody that has lack. And listen, Pastor Riley, I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about a church that will serve the community. I'm talking about a church that will take time out of the busy day and set up a tent down in Bellevue to give people stuff because people got needs in 2022. Oh, go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. I'm talking about somebody that'll take time out of their day and see that you got a need and know that you got a need. And say, I'm going to do everything I can do to help you get over because I know you're going through a tough spot right now. And when you get your stuff together, you can help somebody else. That's what God is calling for today. And that was the fingerprint of the the early church. Now we're so busy concerned about is somebody getting something for something for nothing and I got this and I ain't giving that and I'm not going to do this. Gentlemen, am I preaching Okay. What does the church look like that Jesus had set in place? It was a church that would serve the community and not the building. We're so busy building, building, building. We're so busy building buildings. You try to say that. We're so busy trying to build buildings and cathedrals and, and making our church, putting smoke up on the stage that people are going to hell and we don't even see it. But we got smoke. We're going to get the glory. We're going to tell God, we got a church down there, man. You ought to see it. And he's going to say, what about the souls? What about the, what about the souls? What about the city? What about the community? Oh, I don't think you guys are getting this. I'm talking about the power of Pentecost. And he says, when you do these things, he'll add to the church. I feel like shutting the Bible. When we get out of our church and go into our community, when you open up your wallet and give somebody $20 because you see they don't have gas to get back to the church, then your church, then your church, Okay? But he didn't finish there. We went over to Acts, the third chapter. In Acts, the third chapter, check this out. This is where I really wanted to preach from. So everything I said up to that point was just fluff. In Acts, the third chapter, watch this. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer been the ninth hour, roughly 3 o'clock. Actually, 3 o'clock p.m. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they had laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Wait a minute. Melvin, here's a guy that was carried daily to the temple. Here's a guy that was carried every day and placed in front of the church to beg arms. You notice what never did say the church never came out and helped him? The church never provided his needs? The church never opened his doors. They didn't even take him in. They just laid him at the front of the door. And the prayer was, Sister Tara, that, listen, somebody may go into the church and come back and feel guilty because you're still laying there and give you a few pennies. And this happened for day after day after day. And I wonder how many people went out the side door because they didn't want to pass the man that was lame. I wonder how many of us look at somebody homeless and instead of saying, listen here, can I get you a sandwich? You say, oh man, they need to get you off the street. Never considering why they're there or how they got there. But we do it all the time. 
Our compassion isn't for the person that's homeless. We're kind of like, ah, I don't want to see them. I'm going to go around that way. But I got a man here that's been lame. And the people are carrying him to the temple. And they're just dropping him at the door. Not even on the inside. Who seeing Peter and John, verse 3, about to go into the temple, asked of arms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon the man John, with John, and said, and look, look up on us, and said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expected to receive something of them. Man, I was reading this stuff and studying this stuff, and I shut my Bible. Because sometimes we don't get what we expect him. He was expecting the same old thing. He was expecting nickels and dimes. But this time, he was in the presence of God. Have you ever came to God, to church, and listen here, you really wasn't expecting much, and all of a sudden the power of God fell, and all of a sudden you began to be ushered up into the power and the presence of God, and you're looking around like, Lord, what happened to me? I don't know about you guys, but there's been times I entered into the church and, and I wasn't feeling really well and I wasn't feeling that good. And all of a sudden, the power of God fell and I began to shake myself because I felt like a new man in Christ. Have you ever been there? When you said, I'm not going to church and something on the inside of you just make you get up and go. And when you get there, you feel better than you did when you left your house. And you say, God, I want to thank you that I'm in your presence today. I want to thank you that you shook my body and got me into the presence of God today. I mean, have you ever been there? Well, here's a man that was expecting something. And he looked at Peter. Oh, my God. And he looked at John. And all of a sudden, they looked at him. You guys need to get me because this is the church. Right now, the church is a giving church. The church is a, a, a community church. And now the church is beginning to be a, a church full of dudamus and power because Peter looks at him and says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. I don't have all the money in the world. I don't have enough money to pay your car payment. I don't have enough money to buy your insurance. I don't have enough money to fill your cabinet, but such as I have, I'm going to give it unto you. So the Bible says that when he said that, he reached out and he grabbed the man by the hand. And when he grabbed the man by the hand, something began to happen to the man. They poured him up on his feet. Can, you, can I tell you, he never stood before. But all of a sudden, because he has a hold to the man's hand, John's hand, he began to stand up on his feet for the very first time. No, 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 no. You guys not with me yet. Because sometimes you got to have a point of contact where, listen here, my faith reaches your faith, and I'm believing God that something's going to happen right now. You're not with me yet. You're not with me yet. Listen here, up until this point, I'm talking about the birth of a church. Up until this point, every miracle was done by Jesus. Now Jesus said, I'm going to give you the power and the might to take over where I could do. Now you can do it. Up to this point, every miracle, blind eyes open, lame, dead people walking, they saw the Jesus do it. Now Peter said, for the very first time, now that I have been able to do it with power, now that I got the power of God in my life, silver, I wish I had somebody I could jerk up. Silver and gold, I wish I had somebody I could hold their hand just a minute. Come on, Melvin, you're the closest thing to me. Move your stuff, hurry up. Move your stuff. No, no, sit down, man. You're sick. You're lame. You're lame. <laughs> I felt this thing. I felt the man's pain. I felt the man's emptiness. I felt the man as he sit and he watched people walk by day. It says day after day after day, hoping for a nickel or a dime or a penny, something in my tray. But I feel a change coming. Why do I feel a change coming? Because I feel the birth of a church. 
I feel I've come to the place now where I'm about to see the power of God manifested. Watch this, though. Melvin, I can't give you something and not receive something myself. Peter looks down and says, sibling, go have a number such as I have. Now listen, faith has begun to creep up in Peter. Now I'm going to do what I saw Jesus do. Do you remember when Jesus asked Peter, whom do men say that I am? Peter turns to Jesus and says, some say that you're John the Baptist or Elijah, but I say that you are the son of God. Jesus turns to Peter and says, listen here, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but it's revealed to you by the spirit of God. And upon this, I shall build. He's talking to Peter. He says, Peter, on the revelation of who I am, I'm going to build my church. Now, Peter has taken that revelation from that point to this point. Peter said, I'm going to build my church in the power of God, in the might of God, in the glory of God, and in the love of God. So when you see somebody lame, you can't just walk by. You can't close your eyes. You got to do something about it. Are you guys getting this? I'm just talking about the power of Pentecost. So he reaches out and he grabs the man. And the man stands to his feet, leaps to his feet for the first time. But from, from by that point, he grabbed his man. Guess what had to happen? He said strength had to go into those feet. Now the blood... The blood, vessels had to, the blood vessels had to be opened up. The limbs that hadn't worked for years had to begin to work. The power, the, the, the connection from the mind to the body had to begin to work. Those things that had laid dormant for years in the man's body had to begin to work, and it was because of the power of God being manifested. You never know when somebody going to... And that stuff that's not working in your life is going to have to start to work. That confession that you stood up here and made, I'm believing God for jobs, and have to work. But better than that working for you, how about you working for that? Who would you rather be, Peter or the lame man? Melvin, I'm not done with you yet. So... He lifts him up, Jaina, and the man receives his strength. And for the first time, check this out, people walking by him on the way out of the church this time, they don't, they don't recognize him because he was down on his knees before, but now he's standing tall. He's six foot two now. He was just down there. He didn't know how to, but now he's six two. So the passerbyers got to recognize who he is. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm, not I'm not finished yet because listen here. If you read the text correctly, they see him in a temple. The same guy that been locked there all that time, they see him in the, in the you know, he's, hey, man, what, what, what happened to you? Can I tell you, sometimes the greatest work is not done in the church, it's done outside the church. They inside the temple trying to find a move of God, and the move of God is outside the church. Am I talking to anybody here? You do your greatest work outside the church. We just come in here to get rejuvenated. We come in here to get re-energized. We come in here to get our faith on. But when we go outside the church, your greatest work should be done outside instead of inside. They inside, Gina, looking for Jesus. They inside looking for a move of God. And God is outside healing people, setting the captives free, meeting the needs of the people. But watch this. I got to read this. Watch this. No, Melvin. Can't leave. Oh, man, I'll pay you. I got, I'll give you the rest of what I got. Here. Look, I'll give you what rest. I already paid her here. Take the rest of my money for, for your labors of love. Watch this, though, Melvin. And they took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles and bones received strength. And he leaping, leaping up, stood and walked and entered, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. 
in the temple. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Look at verse 11. And as the lame man, and as the lame man which was healed, and as the lame man which was healed, what is he doing? He did what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get this. If you don't get anything else. He had been lame all those years. He get healed. Isaiah, he jumps up. He runs into the temple. He's praising God. He's disturbing that service in there where they still doing the, the he disturbing that service. He's up, upset the cart. He's jumping around. He's praising God. Look. And they said, man, this is amazing, man. You, you're healed, man. I don't know what happened to you, man. You, you're, you're whole. And look, he goes find Peter and John. And out of his exuberance, he's holding on to him. He's got him by the arm. He's saying, because, listen here, I know from which my healing came. And, and, and it, no, no, you're not getting this. This man has been lame all his life, and all of a sudden he's touched, and he goes into church. The first place he goes into the synagogue, he praises God, but he's never getting from his blessing. I'm connected to what blessed me. Peter and him trying to get on about their father's business, but he said, look here, man, I'm so excited. You ain't going nowhere, man. I just love you. I'm telling you that anytime you do something for somebody, You think your arms are, 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 are useless, but anytime. Am I preaching? Is this okay? Anytime. You send a card out. You can sit down now, Melvin. You're done with you. Lame man. You send those cards out. And because you don't see the instant results, you think nothing happens. But every time you send a card out and it touch somebody's spirit, Happy Wednesday, happy Thursday, happy Friday, happy Saturday, happy Monday, happy Tuesday. Somebody receives strength that they can go another day. Can I tell you, those of you that's doing your inspirational moments, Saturday sensational Saturdays, or whatever they are, whatever you name it, somebody's clinging to it. That's all they getting that day. They're not in the overflow like you are. That's all they getting. And they're clinging to it. So never take what you do lightly because it's somebody's lifeline. Now, Peter, Jane, after this, He got down to about verse 19. They were all fascinated. Listen. They were all fascinated by the healing. Peter gets down to about verse 19 and he starts to preach. Gina, he's standing at the temple. And if you recall, if you recollect, before Jesus left, Peter denied Jesus. If you, if you, if you think about this, about two months previous to this, Peter was walking in fear. And Peter was standing there warming his hands and he denied Jesus. And you remember the, the, the and, but, 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 but listen, but watch this, but watch this now. After the day of Pentecost come, and he received that power. Now he's standing in about the same place that he denied Jesus. And he says, listen here, you need to repent. So he preached the word of God. He preached Jesus, Gina, after he healed the lame man. So the church has three stages that we need to understand that makes an effective church. First stage is get out of these walls. Give yourself. Give yourself and get out of these walls. Heal the lame, the sick, the bruised, the battered. Then preach Jesus. That's what Pentecost is about. The three stages of the church have compassion for your brethren. Walk in the power of God and preach Jesus. And if you do those things, 
the Bible says that God will add unto the church as he see fit. But somebody need to save yourself from this untorn generation. I'm going to drop the Bible. I think God is calling us. No, 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 I don't think. I know God is calling us to another level. In a couple weeks, we're going to walk out. Of, in a couple weeks, we're going to go, and we're going we're gonna to work on some houses for some people. We're going we're gonna to go and spend a week working on houses and projects in our community. We're going to do that. We're going to give ourselves. Actually, we're going to give money to do that. We're going to partner with somebody to do that. Why? Because we want to be an example of the church. And the church is not always in a place of need. It's a place of seeding and not needing. Jim, is that okay? Is that all right? Take your mask. I don't want to see. Is that all right? Okay. Listen. <clears throat> Hold on, listen to this, listen to this. We need your offerings. I mean, listen, every week we have to check and see what's coming in and what's going out. We need your finances. When, when, when Pam and, and, and Diamond and them are saying, give, you got three ways to give, da, 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 da. We need, we need everything you send. But we're not sitting on it. I don't want you to send it here and think that we're just going to buy me a Mercedes this week anyways and, and, and run off into the sunset. I'm going to give me a preacher's Mercedes. No, I'm not. Lord, forgive me. No. Gene, I'm teasing. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm teasing. I'm not. I don't want a Mercedes. I might get a Benz, but I don't want a Mercedes. But I'm saying this. Listen, we need to get out the walls. And it takes finances to do that. But it's a purpose. It's a purpose to everything we do. We want to look like the church. We want to be able to go to a busy bee ball game and see our children prospering. See them doing back over flips. And see them happy in the things of God. So to do that, man, listen, we got to be concerned about the community. We got to be community oriented. oriented. We got to be power oriented. And we got to be Jesus oriented. You guys get this? To be effective church. So when you ride by here, I don't want you to just say how beautiful that facility is and the dead man's full of dead man's bones. But I'd rather you ride by and say the facility not all that great, but they sure got some power in here. Give the Lord a hand clap. Come on, we can do better than that. Give the Lord a hand clap. I'm closing out of here now. I got to pray for a couple of people. Then Pastor Walker going to come. And he's going to close us out before we go off the camera. He's going to close us out. But Tara, would you come up here for one second? When you walked in the door, Tara, Tara, can you come up for me? Can I pray with you one second? Thank you, Jesus. When this young lady walked into church, when she walked into church, my mind, my heart went all the way back some 40 years. I know she don't look like she's 40 years old, but my heart went back 40 years ago. And I saw your hurt today. I saw your pain, your brokenness today. When you walked through the door, I just saw more than terror. You just need a touch from God. You hear me? I'm going to tell you this. God mends the broken hearts. God fills that loneliness. God fills that void with his presence. Look at me now. It's been a while since you felt that touch. But I tell you, today is your day. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have. Ah, 
Sis, there's a restoring coming your way. There's a fresh fire that's coming your way. I come to tell you this morning, you landed in the right place for restoration. The right place for restoring. In the name of Jesus. God said to tell you he'll never leave you or forsake you. That he'll be with you till the end of times. I hear you saying in your spirit, Lord, it's just been a while. I don't know if you I don't know if you do me like you used to. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes, hallelujah. You know the only thing changed about God is us. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to flip the switch for Tara. Lord, I want her to feel your presence like she haven't for years. Lord, I want you to restore that which the canker worm, the locust, and the caterpillar has devoured in the name of Jesus. Give up a fresh anointing, God. Fill every void in the name of Jesus. As she surrender herself to you. <laughs> you feel that, sis? That's the power of God. That's the power of God flowing through your body. Make a hole in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. We got a hold to the horns of the altar. And we're not letting go. You guys praying with me? Are you guys praying with me? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Tara, I started not to go, but you couldn't stay at home today. You was worried about what people are going to say. Look at here what Jesus is going to say. If you haven't got to the place you just need something from God, I'll quit preaching. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, just do it. Come on. Come on, just do it. We've had her with us for a few months now, right? About six weeks? Three months already? Didn't miss a service, did you? So you're going to take something home that you didn't bring with you. You're going back home? You're going back to Texas? Uh, you make sure you go to church when you get to Texas. You been having a good time? You enjoying church? Even when I scare you? <laughs> Even when I call you out? You know what? You've been a pleasure. You've been a blessing. Got a beautiful smile. Beautiful young girl. My cousin says, beauty is, is what beauty does. So we're going to pray that God will cover you. You know that, that old saying, Melvin? That's not a sin of scripture. Why are we asking? Where I'm from another. Watch between me and thee. So I'm going to pray that. Why are we asking? Where I'm from another. How's it go? May the Lord watch between me and thee. Why are we asking? One from another. Father, keep her safe. Keep her safe. Keep her safe, Father. Lord, I pray that you dispatch your angels about her. Lord, these are some troubling times, even for teenagers 14 years old, 15 years old. Lord, these could be some troubling times. Mentally and physically. Lord, are they trying to find themselves? Let her find herself in you. Lord, we pray over the last three months that she's been here with us, God, that, that the word will stick. Lord, if you don't show her anything, just show her your love. Let her know that she's loved. Just the way she is, she's loved. Let her know she's unique and different. 
And that's okay. So we ask that you keep her, Father. And Lord, everyone that she encountered, let them see the Christ in her. That you will use her to change the lives of others. Look, I'm going to tell you something. You will not conform to others, but you will transform others. In the sight of God. You got that? You know what that means? <laughs> I'm going to break it down to you. Look, you're going to run into a lot of people in your life. And they're going to want you to do what they do. They want, they're going to want you to conform to their way of living, their thoughts. But you're not going to conform. You're not going to do what others do. You will transform them. You will make them do what God would have you do. All right? That's a tough job. Ask anybody. But you got it. All right? Gina said, you're a leader. Let's get a Lord a hand clap. Some other people need prayer? You point them out. You point them out. There are some other people that need prayer. I want to pray for Miss Brenda. Come on, Miss Brenda. Don't you guys leave. Stay there. Stay there. Some of you on Facebook, you say, well, I want to see what you do. Well, you stay here. We're going to see the power of God manifested. Miss Brenda, I'm sitting here the whole service trying to figure out who you were. You be getting me every week. Either I'm getting older or you manifesting yourself every week. I tell you one thing. I sure enough see a change in you. God is just beginning to do a work in you. Ah, my God, my God. You're about to in, encounter the power of God. <laughs> wow, watch this. Listen, listen, listen. Old way of thinking is changing. And God is about to do something in you. The same as he did on the day of Pentecost. He poured his spirit out. And so, Lord... I see a willing vessel that's ready for a new move. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. A new thing, God. <laughs> so God, I'm asked that you do the same as you did on them in Acts. That you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your spirit. Yes, God. Ah, my God. Father, in the name of Jesus. All right, Gina. Just point out the next one, baby. Who need it? Come on. Come on. Anybody need prayer right quickly? Move. Move. Move quickly. Move quickly. The power of God is in the house today. The power of God is in the house today. You know what? Can I say that? I want everybody to sting your hands this way. Get Sister Linda. Sister Linda, come up here. Hurry up. Hurry. Hurry, Sister Linda. Move. Move. Come with her. Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, Sister Linda. I need you to connect her, your faith with this young lady right here. Come on, Linda. She's going through a surgery this week, and you've been there. Ah, God, met you, didn't we? You've been there, haven't you? She's father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, she said that she got some fear. And that's understandable. But God, you're bigger than a fear. God, you're more powerful than any fear of the enemy. So God, I'm going to pray the peace of God to begin to flow over my sister right now. From the crown of her head to the very soles of her feet today, Father. First, give her peace. Let her know that she's in your hands, God. Lord, that she's in good hands today, Father. And Lord, I pray that you'll go before today. 
and let healing virtue begin to take place. God, as she goes into that operating room, God, Lord, we direct the, 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 the doctors and the surgeons, God. Lord, let them be, God, skilled by you. Everyone that enters her room, God, every nurse, every orderly, anything that's around her, God, let them be anointed of you. Let them see the value of this lady that's in their hands. Now begin to move by your spirit. Lord, step into that operating room. Step into the time, God, that it is well right now in Jesus' name. Lord, as she stand with like-minded people, God, people of faith, knowing that she's made whole in Jesus' name. She's made a hole in Jesus' name. We speak peace. <laughs> Until that testimony come back, it is well. It is well. It is well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. The Linda been there. She's been there. Jesus. Is there anybody else need prayer before we turn it over to Pastor Walker? I'm gonna close this out. Is there anybody else need prayer? Praise God. Anything particular? <laughs> Father, she can't even think of all the things. Either too many to think of or not any. But whatever it may be, God, do a work. Do a work, God. Father, matter of fact, I just speak peace to her spirit, man. I speak in the midst of this storm. Used to be a song out, the storms of life are raging. And so, Lord, now I speak peace. Let the winds begin to cease in her life. Move by your spirit. Lord, for her children, her children's children, God, meet those needs. For her husband, God, meet those needs. God, everything that she put her hand to do, God, bless it in Jesus' name we pray. Move by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. It is well. It is well. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, give me a hug. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's watching now, listen. I want you to extend your hands. Do something. Do something you haven't done. Extend your hands toward the, the screen or however you're watching it. Just extend your hands that direction, and we're going we're gonna to let our faith join your faith, and we're going to believe God. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, for those that are watching, God, there's a multitude of needs out there. But you told us in the Word to save ourselves from this untorn generation, Father. And so, Lord, I'm believing that you're going to make a ch Father, for that one that's in a hospital, that one that's battling with COVID right now, Lord, that one that's battling ailment in the body right now, let healing virtue take place in the name of Jesus. We speak peace to their storm. Those ones that's battling right now, we speak peace to that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a praise clap. Pastor Walker. Where's the microphone? He's going to close us out. Come here, man. Let me grab your hand. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up this vessel before you. And Lord, we know that there will come a day that he will walk and run and leap again as he did before. And so, Lord, strengthen him in his body, limb to limb. Every area of his life we covered in the name of Jesus. We declare the blessings of the Lord to be upon him. Peace in his body, ailment, pain, sickness have to cease in Jesus' name. 
We declare it. Brother, I'm going to either die in the promise to watch you run in this church and leap or I'll pass in the promise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Ask that you will stand. Glory to God. As we get ready to uh, leave this place, I want to remind you that uh, next Sunday <laughs> is our pastor's anniversary. Those that didn't have the opportunity to fulfill the pledge or the challenge, I want you to know that on that Sunday, we'll be we'll, the offering that we take up, amen, will go all to our pastors. So you'll have an opportunity to, to give at that time, amen? Also, I want to remind you that on Tuesdays, I always say this, that we fast and pray from 9 to 3 that day. So as I know some of you all work, amen, but if you can just take that challenge of just fasting, because we're believing God for some great things to happen in the ministry. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you have done in our lives today. Lord God, we thank you for the transformation that has taken place in our hearts and in our minds. Oh God, we pray right now, Lord God, highly that you dispatch angels of protection as we go back to our place of destination, Lord God. We pray in the name of Jesus that the peace that we sense in this house will be in our house, oh God, when we return. We thank you, Lord God, that you will protect our kids, Lord God, our children, Lord God, for any hurt, harm, or danger, Lord God. Just watch over us, oh God, and meet every need, Lord God, according to your riches which are in glory. We give you the glory. We give you the praise right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.